Grace and peace to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to this Sunday's Reflection and Prayers for Sunday the 21st of June 2020. A welcome to all those joining from the congregations in Stirling Town Centre, those in the Church of the Holy Road, from Viewfield Church and from Park Church and beyond. I pray that you will all know God's love and peace in your hearts today. Let us begin with a reading from Holy Scripture, a reading from the book of the Psalms of David, Psalm 86, read for us today by Linda Miller, Session Clerk at Viewfield Church. Psalm 86 Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am devoted to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you do I cry all day long. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call on you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my cry of supplication. In the day of my trouble I call on you, for you will answer me. There is none like you amongst the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works, works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and bow down before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Let us pray. God of the covenant, your compassion reaches beyond the mere making and keeping of promises. Teach us to listen to one another with your heart, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Sin destroys our lives. Sin destroys our relationships. Sin destroys our hope. But through faith in the saving death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our lives, our relationships, and our future are no longer enslaved to sin. Let us trust the love of God and confess our sin that we might receive grace and true freedom. God of Abraham, Sarah and Isaac, God of Hagar and Ishmael, who gave us your Son, Jesus Christ, the Crucified, Send your Holy Spirit to help us confess and truly repent of our sins. We turn against one another. We fail to care for the weak and poor among us. We pay no heed to the cries of the powerless. We seek our own advantage. Your Son gave his life upon a cross and revealed your eternal self-giving love. Forgive us, merciful God. Wipe sin from our lives and let us find ourselves in Jesus Christ, our Saviour. For it is in his name we pray. O God, who loves us, we know you do not abandon or forsake us. We know our Saviour hears and answers when we cry out from the wastelands of sin. Death cannot bind us, for the risen Christ sets us free. For all of us, this is the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Trust in God's promises and be at peace today and every day. Amen. I invite you to sing the hymn, Come, let us to the Lord our God, with contrite hearts return.
A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 21, verses 8 to 21, read for us by John Miller, an elder at Viewfield Church. Genesis chapter 21, verses 8 to 21. The child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah, son of the Hagar of the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to Abraham, Cast out the slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you. But it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named for you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child, and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him, a good way off, about the distance of a bowshot. For she said, Do not let me look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven, and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy, and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make him a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water, and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy, and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness, and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. Here ends a lesson. Let us pray. O God, you have the power to make a desert a place of renewal and across the sign of redemption. Send your Holy Spirit so that we can hear you and entrust ourselves completely to you. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Today's reading from the book of Genesis of Hagar and Ishmael, of Sarah and Isaac, takes up the story of God's promise that Sarah, even in old age, will bear a son for Abraham, who will be the one in whom God fulfills the promise and upholds the relationship he has established, that Abraham will be the father of God's chosen people, Israel. Isaac, the one whose birth is welcomed with laughter and joy, is the wonderful result of God's power to give life and to make all things new. For with God, nothing is impossible. But Isaac's birth creates a real quandary for Abraham. What to do about Hagar and their son Ishmael, his firstborn, though not of his wife Sarah? The real problem is the evident tension between Sarah, who has now given birth to her own son, and Hagar, who was Sarah's slave girl, and who Sarah herself gave to Abraham to father a son, for she thought she herself never could. Hagar was Sarah's solution to what looked like an impossible situation. But now Sarah sees her and her son as rivals to her own status and that of her son Isaac. And jealousy too must play its part here. Sarah finds it difficult to live with the consequences of her own plotting. And now wants Hagar and Ishmael gone, 
thereby securing her place and Isaac's inheritance. As for Abraham, well, he finds himself between a rock and a hard place. He clearly loves both his sons, is pleased with Hagar, treasures Ishmael as his firstborn, and delights in Isaac. Likely he would prefer to find a way of keeping all his family together. But Sarah's hostility makes that impossible. And Abraham is forced to choose, however reluctantly. Hagar and her son are duly banished, sent into the wilderness with just bread and water. Sarah gets her way. The distressing tale of what follows of Hagar's wandering, of her bread and water running out, of her deep despair and placing her young son under the shade of a bush as she resigns herself to his death and hers, should not leave us unmoved, but bring us to consider her desperate situation and be filled with compassion for her as the victim of this all-too-human story. Yet, it is in just that moment of total abandonment and despair, at the end of her tether with no way out, that God once again proves to be faithful to the promises made to Abraham, that for all that Isaac will be the inheritor of the covenant, Ishmael too will become the father of a great nation. God hears the cries of the child from under the bush, and God's angel calls to her and directs her to a well of life-giving water. And Ishmael, whose name means God hears, is saved along with his mother. We might at this point be tempted to say, well, all's well that ends well. Hagar and Ishmael are saved and go on to prosper elsewhere. Abraham is blessed in that both his sons live and will go on to be fathers of great nations. Sarah gets what she wants, rid of her rival and establishes herself and her son in their rightful place. God is shown to be compassionate, faithful and a keeper of promises. A God who hears the outcast and the excluded and protects them, saving them from death and blessing them with a new life. Yes, it would be easy to frame this tale as a good news story. But I still find aspects of the whole thing troubling. In Sarah, here is a woman who did not trust God enough to believe the promise of a son, who in effect engineered a way to provide her husband with the son he longed for, circumventing what God intends. Yet when God does fulfil the promise of a son, Sarah seems utterly unable to live with the situation that she herself has brought about. Abraham is portrayed as dithering, uncertain, wanting to please everyone, and in a sense, have his cake and eat it. He certainly doesn't appear to have the upper hand within his family group, and is unable to dissuade Sarah from driving Hagar away into exile. And then we have Hagar, a slave girl from Egypt, who is a victim of the injustices and the power imbalance in the relationships here between young and old, men and women, slaves and free. As a foreigner and a slave, she has no choice in what happens to her. She is handed over to Abraham by Sarah without any suggestion that she consented to what was to happen. She is powerless to change her circumstances. She is dependent on the whim of her owner and denied both dignity and worth. In the end, she is dismissed and sent away with little to sustain her or her son, and no one seems entirely troubled by what might befall her. Hagar's experience reminds us that in ancient times, throughout history and still today in the world we live in, there are people, often women and young women at that, 
often from poorer countries or communities, who have no power to defend themselves, or to improve their lives, or to escape from those who are richer and more powerful. People who are trafficked, enslaved, abused, and abandoned to their fate, or even killed. Events just now in the USA and in Britain, the Black Lives Matter protests, remind us that our own nations have profited from human slavery in the past, and challenge us with the knowledge that human slavery still exists in many places worldwide now. Our only consolation when we face up to the injustices people suffer, to the exploitation and suffering of so many, is that God hears their voices. God is not unmoved. As God heard Ishmael, God comes to them. But God responds with the demand for justice for all people and for the valuing of every single human life. God, who is faithful and loving, who so generously provides and who protects the weak, the vulnerable, the marginalised, the hungry and the captive, looks to each one of us as the people of God, to accept our responsibility to stand up, to speak out, and to act to bring freedom and hope to such as these, the least in our world, the powerless and the exploited, as we prepare the way for God's kingdom and await Christ's eternal reign. To God, be all thanks and praise, now and forevermore. Amen. Let us pray. God of our ancestors, you are also the God of our future. You showed mercy to Hagar and Ishmael in the desert, just as you answered Sarah's laughter with Isaac's birth. We pray that you heal the deathly divisions between all peoples of the earth today. We pray that the Church of Jesus Christ will be so filled with the Holy Spirit, so committed to the head of the Church, that we will have Christ's mind among us. May your living word inspire us and touch our hearts and give us compassion for a suffering world. We pray for world leaders and those you, O God, have placed in authority, who seek to make peace among nations. May their success be measured in generations who live free from war. We pray for the doctors, the nurses, the health professionals and scientists who are committed to healing the sick, especially those in areas of poverty, of violence, of deprivation, especially at this time in this world when we are still anxious about the coronavirus pandemic. May you guide them and bless them and guard them by your spirit who lifts up the brokenhearted and even brings new life to those who have gone before us. We pray for teachers and school staff and students and all who long to learn and study. May they find strength in you to reach beyond the present and themselves and so embrace the future with the hope that you are holding for them. We pray for your promised kingdom to come, when all wars will cease, when there will be no disease, when even death is no more, and when courageous faith, hope and love cast out hatred and poverty, and all things are made new. All of this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour, 
Redeemer and Friend, saying, O God, in your mercy, hear us. Amen. And as Jesus taught his disciples to pray, so we pray together, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. And as our service comes to a close, I invite you to sing together the hymn Put all your trust in God, in duty's path go on. say, go in peace, to seek to serve God in Christ's name among the peoples of our world and our communities. And as you go in peace, may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore.